today this is uh, Matt from Barrett's. We're interviewing Michael Barker today, and uh, he just done a clinic with us. So I'm going to ask him a few questions. How you going, man? Good. Thanks, man. <laughs> you didn't bug it. No, not really. No, no. <laughs> Energized. Energized. Okay. First question is, what are you cur currently doing musically at the moment? Well, currently, well, if you'd asked me that a few minutes ago, we've been <laughs> doing this music, uh, you know, drum recital clinic style thing. Yeah. So doing uh, a few one-off things like this. I I'm also uh, have been writing and recording uh, with a Swamp Blues project called Swamp Thing mm -hmm. in New Zealand cool. at my studio at home and um, that's a lot of fun and we're out doing gigs in New Zealand and hope to make it across the ditch <laughs> soon. Sweet. Yeah. Can't wait for that one. Yeah, yeah. And there's a, um, a bunch of other projects as well that I've been involved with producing and yep. engineering. Main influences and why? I'm, I'm, I'm influenced a lot by my wife, and and why I'm influenced by hers because we care about one another and and um, yeah I have to say she is probably one of the most powerful influences in my life. At the moment. But musically, do you mean? Yeah. Oh, you're wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Musically, um, I don't know. It, it really depends who I'm working with, you know. If I'm playing with someone, they're influencing me. We're communicating with one another through music, so yeah. that's probably a big part of it. Yeah. It's, you have a you have a studio in New Zealand. Tell us a bit about it. Yeah, my studio in New Zealand currently is set up in the house. I have a studio outside, and I'm building a drum room. Yeah. So I'm building a drum room that I that I, I really really like. Yeah. You know. So I've designed, I've designed a drum room. And I'm um, building that, yeah. And um, so it's that's my studio, and it's in a really beautiful location. It has a, a great aspect. Looks out on a lake and some mountains and some trees and stuff. And it's a good place to make music. It feels good there. Good, good atmosphere. Yeah, it's a good atmosphere. And um, yeah, and, and there's all the means with which to record in there, equipment-wise. Yeah. Drives you in life in general. How do you keep going? How do you? What pushes you? Um, to keep practicing and being better. Like ego. Ego. <laughs> <laughs> Apples. <laughs> no, it's all about I think it's a lot of things. You know, I think. I think in music and in life, I think it's, it's a, it's a, it, I guess wanting to, to to share, wanting to, um, wanting to contribute. Wanting to feel like I'm contributing, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like in yeah. your society, in your community, playing music, people enjoy it, you enjoy that, they enjoy it. That's a good thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's it. You know, happy. and and, and that, that's 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 a, a good driving. You know, it's a real driving factor. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. What do you do in your spare time when you're not touring, recording, or teaching? Um, I, I like trout fishing, so I do a little bit of trout fishing. Yeah, and um, get a few. Get a few. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> just pottering around, yeah. you know, general jobs around the house. Yeah. You know, yeah. normal yeah. stuff. Normal, normal person, stuff. Yeah. Do you have any advice for upcoming drummers out there? Yep, take up fishing. Take up fishing. Do that. <laughs> um, you have your own unique drumming style. How do you achieve that? And let your personality show through to the music. Um, how do I let it show through? Oh, I, I guess I guess trying to trying to be myself, like just not trying, but allowing myself to be myself, being finding the confidence within myself to to say, okay, well, this is what you do. You know, you don't do that. You do this. You do a bit of that, and that's cool. You know, like I guess always extending yourself, but being being okay with with what you're doing, saying okay, well, this is who I am, and and and, and, and having that self confidence and self belief at any given moment to just have a crack at something, yeah. you know, have a go, go, have a go yeah. mix it up, try something else, you know. For all those drummers out there with the dream of making it the big time, what's it like touring the world, playing music for people, and getting paid to do it? Well, it's amazing. It really is. It's amazing, and it's a real blessing. And yeah, I've had the fortunate opportunity to to have done that on on many levels. You know, we 
when I say many levels, I mean playing for small crowds, medium, large crowds, you know, going, playing, where you're setting up your own gear, mm. as opposed to having, you know, a tech or something like that, you know, yeah. you know driving, as opposed to flying, and mm. having a tour bus, you know, all these different yeah. sort of um, permutations, and, and it really is, it, being able to, to play music and, and share it mm. around the world, it's, it's, it's a joy, because you, you you, um, you know, I, when you play music and you tour, it opens up um, many doors. I'll, I'll give you an example. I was in New Delhi, and there was I was playing with Tap Dogs, the show Tap Dogs. Yeah. I was playing keyboards and guitar and percussion, and there was another musician as well. And, and we we became friends with someone who worked in this hotel and he, he took us along to see a concert that was going to be held in his village and it was some Muslim musicians and they were going to be performing this family that had been performing for hundreds and hundreds of years generations of musicians we arrived there and there was the, the concert had been postponed or cancelled and the guy was so upset about this he said I know where they live, and I'm going. No, 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 no. He's going. No, we'll go and find out why. And he went, and he rapped on the on the gate. And then some guy comes. To go, and he said, basically, he said, look, I've got these musicians here with me, and they're they're from Australia, and they we went to see the concert, and the concert's not on, and we just want to know when it's going to be on. And he was, the guy said, well, look, if you you know wait ten minutes, they can come in. And we waited, and we went in, and they had reset their whole lounge room. And myself and my friend, we sat down and they ushered us onto the floor sat down, and they performed this concert for us, the yeah. family. Wow. Yeah, they, they, it, it, was, it was completely bizarre. Mm. Like, it was, it was actually incredible. Mm. And they, those sorts of things, like, if, if he'd said, look, there's a couple of backpackers here and they were wondering, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. I mean, like, there, there was, they had sort of got, cut, got the cut of our jib and sort of thought, oh, well, these guys are really... They're, you know, reasonably serious musicians, and they and they want to appreciate this cultural mm. exchange, and and that you know that was amazing. And I've had, I've had other experiences like that where where doors have opened up, like, and you just get this window into a another world, you know, and cultural sort of experience and exchange, which is just extraordinary, you know, when you travel. And those are really those are amazing experiences. Yeah, yeah, incredible. Is drumming something you wish to be doing uh, well into your later years? Yes, drumming is something. Actually, my father mentioned that the other day. He's turning 80 in a couple of days, and he said to me, "He goes, you know what? You'll probably be playing drums well into because he was we're talking about what what keeps you going in life." Yeah, yeah. And he was sort of saying, you know, because he was in, he's a real physical outdoor kind of guy, was in the mountain climbing and all that. He can't do that anymore. He's got diabetes, and he sort of just. You know, so he, he likes to watch the YouTube and um, <laughs> the YouTube. yeah, and he, so he's it's, he's been leading a more you know sedentary lifestyle. You know, and he can't. So, but he said, you know, you'll probably be playing music when you're my age if you make it to my age. And I said, and I said, I certainly hope so. You know? So, and I remember seeing um, like that Born and Mr. Social Club when that movie came out. He's been yeah, there, yeah. and there was all those guys and that guy Compay Gwendor. Yeah. The singer, you know, and he was in his yeah. 90s and he was still smashing it. <laughs> and all these guys, and you know, and I, and I thought, that's, you know, I really want to be doing that, playing music and enjoying it. Um, if I'm lucky enough to live to that age. Yeah. Cool. Well, that's it. That about wraps it up. So you want to see that apple? Yeah. And we want to go to the pub. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I'd like to thank Michael Barker. We, he's come all the way from New Zealand for this. <laughs> Done an awesome job tonight. It was yeah. packed. It was a great night. Just like to thank you very much, yeah. and we really appreciate cool. it. No we worries, really man. Really do appreciate it. Real pleasure. Cool. Cheers.